UFO enthusiasts of Reddit, what's our most compelling evidence that UFOs have visited Earth? Redditors reactions. Redditor 1, David Bowie. Redditor 2, I think you mean aliens. UFOs happen all the time. Especially out in the desert where the military tests its secret sauce. This isn't even conspiracy stuff, it's known to happen. Read the prologue of this book. Redditor 3, I want them to exist, then there is the Cometa report in this. Redditor 4, I was just at Malibu Beach and I saw one. Completely silent, unwavering, high speed, and no tail. And Redditor 5, this needs a serious tag. I believe there is other life in the universe because it only makes sense that there would be AMD it would be arrogant to think otherwise. Whether they can travel here and visit is another question altogether. I love the idea of a grand conspiracy that the government knows the truth and hides it from us. I also think that just because we can't travel to other planets doesn't mean they can't. So, I choose to just believe blindly that yes aliens exist and maybe the influence fro gods throughout history. I did see a UFO as a child. I've told the story a handful of times on Reddit, and flat out, I know what I saw. Redditor 6, why didn't you use the serious tag? Come on man. Redditor 7, historian here. First off, aliens did not build the pyramids, Stonehenge, or give the Aztec spaceships. I do believe we are not alone in the universe. I do believe we have been visited by other life forms. I believe they are watching us from a distance. I don't blame them for not contacting us and joining us in the shitstorm called Earth. Redditor 8, Battle of Los Angeles. Made the papers, pictures and everything. Redditor 9, Phoenix Lights, and all the witnesses. Redditor 10, I don't have evidence. But I think people have weird ideas about aliens and about intelligent life in general. For instance, there's a perception that since an alien visitor has the technology to travel vast distances, they must be super intelligent. This isn't so. Wait a few thousand years and maybe humankind will figure out how to travel faster than light. That doesn't make us any more intelligent it's just more technology. We could totally visit another planet orbiting another star while just as stupid as we are now. So that has interesting implications for potential visitors to our planet. We could have alien visitors, and we could overlook them because we have expectations for their intelligence. As an example, crop circles might seem silly, but what if our alien visitors are just not that smart and have no idea how to communicate with us? We also have expectations for the kind of intelligence an alien visitor would have and therefore the kinds of interactions we would have with it. Imagine if our visitor were like a dolphin. Dolphins live a very different kind of life than we do. So we lack the perspective to quantify dolphin intelligence and it takes some study to find and successfully interact with dolphins. Dolphins get up to very different things than humans do. Similarly, an alien would probably operate on a different level than us. Not higher or lower necessarily, just very different. For that reason, I think there's a good chance that if we've had alien visitors, we might not have noticed. Edited, a word. Redditor 11, the Roswell incident of 1947 might be cliched, and contaminated by specious coverage in the media, films, and so on, but it is a very interesting case. It's a situation where the response by the authorities invites you to believe that they must be covering something up, because no other scenario makes sense. Long story short in 1947, flying saucers were a small time craze after Kenneth Arnold's famous sighting of them. People wanted to know what they were. So far, so good. Shortly after, in Roswell, New Mexico, the Roswell Army Air Field Public Information Office please note that well released a statement to the press that a crashed flying disc had been found on a ranch nearby. This statement was then retracted shortly after. A Major Jesse Marcel, who belonged to a local intelligence division, said he helped recover the debris, stating officially at the time that he had recovered foil, rubber, and other innocuous materials consistent with a weather balloon or similar. He was also photographed posing with pieces of foil and so on, in pictures that were published locally and with an expression on his face that few would say looked amused or happy. However, many years later a renowned UFOlogist interviewed Major Marcel, and Marcel said that the debris was not consistent with that of a weather balloon at all, but was in fact unusually tough thin but extremely difficult to bend or twist, resistant to being scratched with a pocket knife, 
and if I remember this right prone to recovering its shape after being distorted, in the manner we observe nowadays in shape memory alloys. The son of the rancher who found the debris said his father related the highly unusual nature of the material as well. The official version started off with the debris being a crashed weather balloon. This change to the debris being a crash top secret mobile balloon, a device used to detect Soviet nuclear explosions hence all the secrecy and cover stories. When it became obvious that numerous people had in fact also seen unusual bodies associated with the debris meaning that the idea that the debris was any sort of instrumental balloon was nonsense this official story changed again, in the 1990s, to the military releasing a statement that the debris was some sort of experiment set in the 1950s and the bodies were mannequins that had been scorched, and that this represented the final official account of the events of Roswell 1947. There may have been other official versions of the story that have come and gone that I've missed, I haven't followed UFOlogy for many years. The problems with the official version of events are obvious. There is nothing secret about crashed mobile balloons that would necessitate such a clumsy cover-up, or the detention and threatening interrogation of the rancher who found it, and there sure isn't anything secret about scorched mannequins. There is more to the Roswell incident than is covered in this Wikipedia article, but it's a good place to get started. The bottom line is, if flying saucers don't really exist and never crashed at Roswell, then someone should tell the US military that they are doing a bad job of acting like it. Redditor 12, it appears the Dogon tribe in Mali present a good case. Redditor 13, first of all, obviously Op is referring to extraterrestrials when he says UFOs. Secondly, there's a lot of garbage anecdotes and what if postulation in this thread, and only one top post about the statistically low likelihood that we are the only first intelligent life in the universe. Statistically speaking because of how old the universe is and when we arose it is ridiculously unlikely that a this is the only planet with life on it and b that we are the only or first intelligent life. Doesn't mean it's impossible, and there are likely factors that we don't understand yet that influence the beginning of life intelligence. But it's something to keep in mind. As to extraterrestrials cruising around Earth's atmosphere and UFOs, there are so many independent accounts of similar sightings and incidents, going back to before these things got into the zeitgeist thanks to sci-fi movies, that you have to consider the possibility they're real. There's a great podcast called Mysterious Universe which partly makes fun of crazy theories and is partly fascinated with the possibility some of it could be real. So it's not ancient aliens trash, there's healthy skepticism and they interview people who take UFOs etc seriously, but aren't tinfoil hat conspiracists either. It's really interesting and funny and I'd recommend it to most people in this thread. Redditor 14, there are a couple fascinating UFO reports that interest me. Whether they were aliens in spacecrafts or secret government testing, it's still interesting. I think these are some of my favorite UFO reports aside from famous ones like Roswell and the Phoenix Lights. 1989, 1990 Belgium UFO wave I've heard 1,300 people witnessed a triangular UFO across Belgium and there were a few pictures taken of them one is supposedly a hoax while the other is still unexplained. Disappearance of Franklin Valentich while piloting a light aircraft over Base Strait in October 1978, the 20-year-old pilot claimed he saw a UFO about 1,000 feet above him. His last words recorded before transmission broke up was it's not an aircraft. Falcon Lake incident on May 20, 1967 in Falcon Lake, Manitoba a man named Stefan Michalak witnessed two glowing red cigar-shaped object in the sky and one landed tasking on a disc form. Stefan sketched it on paper and thought it was a secret US military aircraft so he approached it and upon hearing muffled voices, he called out if they needed help Canadian confirmed, but saw weird lights and materials inside it as well in a panel with a grid pattern of holes. Suddenly a blast of air hit him and he was knocked backwards. Later when he went to the hospital, some burns he had appeared in the grid-like pattern of circular holes he had seen on the panel of the craft that had appeared on his chest. Stefan was a military policeman in Poland before he moved to Canada making this pretty credible too. Travis Walton abduction probably my favorite UFO report is that of Travis Walton who was a logger and was with seven of his friends in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest in Arizona in November 1975 when they spotted a strange light. 
They got closer to it and pulled their truck over and Travis got out to approach the hovering light. Out of nowhere, the light shot a beam on Travis and he collapsed to the ground. His friends freaked the duck out and got out of there. When they told their stories, police thought it was a cover-up for murder but none of them failed a lie detector test. Travis was gone for five days before reappearing on the side of a road missing but not before a huge search of the area found no trace of him. It's very weird stuff and very interesting to hear him talking about his story today. As you might already know, the movie Fire in the Sky is based off this abduction case. Redditor 15, the group of over 500 government, military, and intelligence community witnesses testifying to their direct, personal, first-hand experience with UFOs, ETs, ET technology, and the cover-up that keeps this information secret. Redditor 16, Ever since I was a kid I believed in UFOs, and was fascinated with the subject. But having my own sighting cemented my belief. It was somewhere between 8.30 pm 9 pm. I was sitting in my bedroom watching a movie on DVD. My bedroom has two windows. One facing south. The other facing east. I was sitting beside the window facing south. Both of my windows are wide open because I have no air conditioning. If you look outside my south window, you will see the roof of the house next door a one-story house. My house is two stories, beyond that are the treetops, and naturally the sky. It was a cloudy evening which blocked out the stars and the moon assuming there was a moon out that night. During the movie I just happened to glance out the window when all of a sudden from behind the treetops a diamond-shaped craft came flying in a north-northeast direction, towards me and my house. This craft was lit up with an orange glow around the edges and a bright white in the middle. It moved at an incredible speed without making a sound. Not one sound was made by it. It took no more than a couple of seconds to come out from beyond the treetops, across the sky underneath the clouds, towards me to over the roof of my house and out of my sight. I've seen airplanes and helicopters fly at various altitudes over my neighborhood and none of them moved anywhere near as fast as the UFO did, much less without making a sound with the exception of a few airplanes that flew at a high enough altitude to be out of earshot as a result. Nor in the entire time I've lived here, do I ever recollect any aircraft coming from that direction, from over those treetops down south. There are no airports, no landing strips, no military bases, no chopper pads south of me. Just the usual houses, malls, and the ocean. Redditor 17, what if Earth is a laboratory? What if Earth is the only planet that has more than a few species? Maybe different aliens from different planets brought certain species from their home worlds and planted them here to see how they would associate with other off-world species. For example a gazelle would be from a planet near Alpha Centauri. An elephant from Orion. Maybe the duckbill platypus was meant as a cosmic practical joke. As was the skunk. Maybe after millions of years in countless spacefaring races, they still continue to come here to see this one tiny blue planet that is basically a universal zoo for passing aliens. Redditor 18, I don't think any single piece of evidence is that credible. I think the sheer number of reports and theories makes it really hard for me to believe that all of them are false. Redditor 19, drawings of them from hundreds of years ago, such as the painting Baptism of Jesus, by Arndt de Gelder. I mean there are a UFO right in the center of the painting. Redditor 20, Diodal. The source is FBI.gov, by the way. Redditor 21, three things. 1. The Beckley Tepe. Just look it up and have your mind blown. 2. I once saw something that I wouldn't call a UFO but also wasn't nothing. I was sitting in my car waiting for a friend and looking up at the night sky. It was a totally clear night. Then I saw a blue flash in the sky similar to what you would see if a cop light flashed on a wall but it was one flash and it looked like something had reflected this blue light. It's hard to explain. Anyway Q5 military planes patrolling the area over the next hour. 3, and my most compelling one to date. I was lying in bed at about 3 am. Now I lived in a remote area, in that I was a kilometer down a dirt road and my nearest neighbors were 500 meters down the road. We had sheep in fields around our house and an olive grove on the other side of the road. Now every time a car drove by you'd hear the gravel. Lying there waiting to go to sleep I hear a beeping noise. The kind that you hear on a radar or a submarine. 
that almost echoing bing, bing, bing. In any case the origin of the sound was directly above me and I heard it pass directly over the house. I was so tempted to go outside and look up but terrified of what I might see, so I stayed inside. Safe to say I didn't get much sleep that night. Honestly the most realistic UFO experience I've ever had. Redditor 22, every time I take off my tinfoil hat, I immediately pick up signals. Every. Damn. Time. Redditor 23, nice try Fox Mulder, but don't give up, the truth is out there. Redditor 24, there are many from thousands years of Chinese records. For example, the drawing of fireball in the sky. This mass sighting happened in the city of Nanjing, 1892. At a time no modern rocket or aircraft had been made by man, this fireball was not an asteroid nor hot air balloon stated in the description. The record also says the fireball made very little sound. One other interesting case may be the identical flying trips. One record from 1792 said two men carried a grandpa, took him through Shandong province from north to south in the air. The other record is quite modern called Huang Yanqiu incident which has a documentary about it. In 1977, Huang Yanqiu, a farmer, was taken by two men in dreams, traveled from Hebei to Nanjing. After he went back, that two men took him from Hebei to Shanghai months later. At the third time he traveled nine cities throughout China in the air carried by the two men on the shoulder. This incident has records of the person's own account, telegrams from destinations to his village and military logs. It also has drawings of the two mysterious men based on witnesses' descriptions. Edit, fix the expressions. Redditor 25, uh there was that documentary a few years ago called Men in Black. Redditor 26, I'm not an enthusiast so maybe I don't qualify to answer your question. However, I didn't see any mention of J. Allen Hynek in this thread. He was a scientific advisor to the U.S. Air Force projects on UFOs. He went into it with the idea to show people how science works, that UFOs can easily be explained, but slowly changed his opinions. Unlike others UFO personalities from that time, he remained a respected scientist throughout. His book The UFO Experience, A Scientific Inquiry is a fascinating read, both as kind of a laid-back thriller officials trying to cover up UFO stories and real documentation, all narrated through Hynek's scientific skepticism. It also includes many documented sightings from the time, all picked apart, compared and analyzed. It's the closest thing I've come to the real X-Files. Redditor 27, whatever it is, I want more of it. Redditor 28, for anyone interested Stargate is a great documentary. S. Redditor 29, I'm not an enthusiast, but I remember reading that the Chilean Navy issued this report back in January. Bonus, 10-minute video footage is included. UFO video just released from Chilean S586 D37 4B014E7 C72 E56B. Redditor 30, Elon Musk. Redditor 31, there are many astronauts who have seen UFOs, in the atmosphere of the Earth and while in space. Their accounts have been well catalogued, but received little coverage in the mainstream media, which for some reason has spent many years wasting very few opportunities to ridicule and downplay notable sightings and reliable witnesses, where they even deign to cover them at all. I can also recommend Above Top Secret by Timothy Good as an excellent source for definitive statements by astronauts on the subject of UFOs. Redditor 32, technically, UFO just means unidentified flying object. If you see an object that is flying and you don't know what it is, you have seen a UFO. I go out birding all the time and technically any time I see a bird that I can't ID, it is a UFO. Redditor 33, I dunno. Giorgio Tsoukalos Barber, Redditor 34, I've been actually thinking about some shit about the army and navy what if tomorrow is the day that the ducking aliens came and invaded our nation? Like, would we even be able to duck with their shit? Like do we got the type of weaponry to duck with their ships? Or not at all, like would they just walk up in this mother ducker laughing at us, and blasting at us and making everybody disintegrate and assimilate without a hint of intimidation? Or could we do some shit to be making their heart race? Granted I don't know the alien heart, but you get what the duck I'm saying? Like what the duck would it be like? Would they be like Earth go hard? Or is it just another conquest? 
Redditor 35, I'll get the popcorn. Redditor 36, because ancient astronaut theorists believe the History Channel show about aliens, and everything is presented as fact so we must have been visited by them. Also, Giorgio Tsoukalos' substantial list of credentials and fashionable hair speak for themselves. Sarcasm. Redditor 37, late to the party, but I actually took a picture of some unidentified lights when I visited DC I didn't even notice them when I was taking the picture and only saw them after I went through my photos. This makes it very likely that it was a camera effect, but still worth posting I think. They're right above the Capitol building. This OBMXJY video is also pretty wild. Taken in Istanbul in 2008, there's a clear outline of an object. I if it has been proven fake yet but if not, that seems pretty convincing. Redditor 38, sometimes I find glitter on things but I haven't bought any so I don't know where else it could come from. Redditor 39, follow up question, what organization can I give a bit of my cold hard cash and get a certificate that says I have a doctorate in ufology? I've been meaning to introduce myself as a doctor for a while now and I would like to see the looks on people's faces when I deadpan tell them I'm a ufologist. Redditor 40, saw a giant blue beam of light off Cedar Avenue in Minnesota about 30 minutes south of the cities. Was like what the duck is that? All the while I was thinking how cool would it be to be abducted and leave this shitty excuse for a planet and see the cosmos, thing kept getting closer and closer and I drove closer to it. Eventually. I got to the point where it was in the middle of the field and I couldn't get any closer to it without getting out of my car. Got out and a few people mostly teenagers were all looking at it and we were all trying to guess what the duck it was and obviously we all thought it was a UFO but nobody wanted to be the cuckoo to say it. Then suddenly it bolted out towards Minneapolis and within a blink of an eye was gone. That was the most bizarre thing of my life and it should have more of an influence on me but it doesn't. I never think about it unless people talk about UFOs and even then it almost feels like it never happened but it most definitely did. Redditor 41, okay so I might sound crazy and I know this is by no means concrete evidence. But I'm pretty sure I've been abducted. I started talking about it as a joke because this spot just suddenly showed up on my stomach one day. It's small and looks like there's something black beneath my skin. When you look really close there seems to be an incision. Scar and it hurts when I poke it. Light pain will move straight upward from it. It's been there for two months now with no changes. Redditor 42, so I was on my rooftop studying for an exam. I was really focused and just took occasional breaks to look at the stars. There was this one insanely bright object in the sky that didn't flicker or twinkle, it was just there and its brightness put all the stars to shame. Logical me assumed it was a planet of course, and I continued to stare at it. Then just out of the blue, the brightness increased by four times and it literally zipped across the sky. This object just sitting in the sky moved really fast across the sky and just disappeared entirely. It covered what looked like thousands of kilometers within a single second. I have never seen airplanes or satellites move like that at all, just the sheer speed of it blew me away. And this only happened when I started to stare intently at it like it was aware I was observing it. After it disappeared I was just questioning what I had seen and the only word I had for it was an unidentified flying object. Redditor 43, when I was 19 years old I was sitting at my kitchen table while a group of friends screwed around in my living room. All of a sudden I had an intense urge to go outside and sit down. I argued with myself why would I go outside and sit down at this hour. 11ish at night. So after a minute or two of me arguing the point with myself, I decided I had no reason not to go outside and sit down. So I got up, went outside and pulled up a fold-out chair and sat down in a place I never sat before like I was on autopilot, my body knew where to sit. As soon as I sat down, I looked up at the tree line into the dark sky and a large yellow ball pulsed out of the trees leaving a streak of light behind it, stopped dead in the sky, then pulsed again and shot across the sky like a beam of light and was gone. I said to myself WTF. Nobody will ever believe this. I got up and went back inside, and never told any of my friends until years later. Four always wondered if other people in that neighborhood, and my home, had that same feeling to go outside and sit but were too distracted or occupied to do so? Odd occurrence, but for me there is no doubt it was a UFO. Manned by aliens? 
unless we have developed a way to simulate ESP, in leaning towards aliens. Redditor 44 Not an enthusiast, but when I was 11 I saw a shooting star, went nearly across the whole sky. Then immediately turned to 180 and zoomed away two times as fast as it first did. I don't know about aliens but it's now open to a possibility in my book. Redditor 45 My grandfather chased one in a jet when he was USAF. Not the kind of man to make shit up. Redditor 46 I'm sure this is late, but I'd like to share my story and perspective on this. I'll preface with a few summary points, and then expand. 1. I absolutely believe that there are forms of life on other planets. This isn't an extraordinary claim. It's highly likely life formed on Mars, and with Europa, having three bodies with anthropogenesis in just our solar system indicates to me that life is common, and intelligent life on planets beside Earth is very likely. 2. The distances between planets and stars is immense. Unimaginable immense. Even with intelligent life being common throughout the universe, think of the places just on Earth that you haven't found worthwhile to go to. Expand that times a trillion trillion trillion. 3. The obstacles of interstellar travel compared to the benefits are proof positive, to me, that it has never occurred, and has certainly never occurred at scale. So that's what I believe. Here's what I know on the matter. The incident at Roswell is way cooler than you might think. My uncle was a fantastically smart man named Bruce Ashcroft. He was a historian in New Mexico in the National Air Intelligence Center, and was involved in the report to Congress in 1995 about Roswell. Here's the report, 110 Roswell 2.pdf. In summary, what the mythos condensed into a single event actually involved details of events spreading over something like two decades. The storytelling abilities of humanity is incredible. Roswell is a folk tale that we watched form itself. It's like being able to meet the first person who told the Paul Bunyan story around a campfire or meeting Johnny Appleseed. And that's not an insult to people who believe it's an alien crash it's not factually true, but they are part of what is the most important part of humanity preserving our emotional placement through narrative. They would rather believe the story that promotes wonder, awe, and fear than existing in mere fact. Redditor 47, Canadian Defense Minister admitting it, if this is real. Redditor 48, the one reason above all for me are crop circles. Yeah, students have made all of them, even the complex ones, by using planks and walking around and all of that in one night. Watch this, Redditor 49, Mitch McConnell, his face looks like melting plastic, definitely an alien. Redditor 50, I have to believe that if an alien race is so advanced that they could travel vast distances in space to reach our planet, they would know a thing or two about not being seen by us, if for some reason they even cared about that. Which I don't see why they would. Redditor 51, this thread is filled with so many crazy people blaming skin cancer and dreams on UFOs. Redditor 52, asks questions about UFOs on Reddit, forgets the serious tag. An astounding shitpost full of shitposts. Redditor 53, the ancient Puma Punku site in Bolivia confuses archaeologists to this day. Nobody can seem to explain the technology required to construct this site in 536 AD. Redditor 54, there is no evidence whatsoever that aliens have visited Earth. Edit, if you disagree please provide a counterexample. So far none have been presented ITT. Redditor 55, it wouldn't mean much to others but my evidence is what I saw. I don't really talk about it much because the only other witness to it was guy driving down the same road I was, he stopped because he saw me pulled over and staring into a field, asked if I needed help and I just asked do you see that? And he immediately pulled over in front of my car and hopped out because he saw it as well. An egg-shaped craft hovering dead silent in a field just outside the city I grew up in, lights blinking in series around it. I stood there for 20 minutes or so, until my neck got sore, goosebumps the entire time. I've seen weather balloons, at that point I was already heavily into astronomy and had seen many things that were unusual in the sky shooting stars that sparkled brilliantly as they burned up, satellites, the ISS but always had an explanation. I have to admit, I always had my doubts about the people that spoke of UFOs but that day things changed. Redditor 56 my favorite evidence of U.F.O. is the Trebb spacecraft. 
It is a government black project which actually Northup Gunman patented all the technology on non-black patents meaning they can eventually sell this commercially. There is lots of recorded footage of this aircraft and people claiming it is a UFO. Which to them it is, but not to me. I've seen one in person, and you can see lots of footage of them over war zones like this one here in Syria or this one in Afghanistan. Here is the Wiki 3 Black Manda, Redditor 57, woke up with probe slut branded on my ass, Redditor 58, fiber optics, Redditor 59, brother and I 11 years old or so, saw a large craft on a summer night hovering for an hour lights flashing around it. It scared us and we didn't know what it was. Fast forward 30 years later, I tell my mother. Her eyes got big. She said she was walking with her brothers in the late 50s about a mile from where we saw what we saw. She described similar craft, flew over the four-lane road there, all cars stopped, all light turned off and this thing hovered there. Then it suddenly shot off. All the lights came back on and the cars all started up. That's proof enough to me.